we have a crisis in the world, tremendous crisis, and also crisis in our consciousness, in us. I see the urgency of change, radical revolution, mutation in the mind. I see it. It is necessary. There is complete quietness of the mind, and that which is silent has vast space. Only then that which is nameless comes into being. This is Urgency of Change, the Krishnamurti podcast. Hello and welcome to episode 7 of Urgency of Change. This and next week's episode features Krishnamurti in conversation with Iris Murdoch. The conversation is titled, Where There is Self-Interest, Love Is Not. This is a podcast from Krishnamurti Foundation Trust. Please see our official advert-free YouTube channel for hundreds of video and audio recordings, of full talks and selected extracts. For more information about our activities and programs, such as how to volunteer, we are online at kfoundation.org. You can also find us on Instagram and Facebook at Krishnamurti Foundation Trust. We are a charity and rely on your support to continue to preserve and make Krishnamurti's work available. If you enjoy our podcast, please let your friends know about it and leave a review online. This would help the podcast gain visibility. Iris Murdoch was a well-known novelist and philosopher. Her books explore themes such as good and evil, morality and the power of the unconscious. They emphasise the inner lives of individuals in the tradition of Dostoevsky and Tolstoy, whilst her philosophical works reinterpret Aristotle and Plato. In this first conversation, Krishnamurti and Murdoch inquire into love discovering that love is not desire or pleasure. Love is not the opposite of hate. Love has no relationship to jealousy. And love can never bring conflict. You please ask. Well, I have a lot of of questions. Um, I've got notes of them here, which I will consult if I may from time to time. Uh, I think you'll have to speak a little loud. All right. um, And... uh, I'll just start with one uh, that uh, interests me, and we'll see where we we go, because there's a lot that I would like to ask. Uh, It's about the word experience, which you sometimes use in your writings, as uh, representing something which you think we should, in some sense, overcome. And you seem to uh, connect the idea of experience with the notion of... uh, preconceived attitudes or dogmas or beliefs uh, which uh, impede uh, a kind of being which you would connect with, uh, with a creative present existence. Now, I don't entirely understand this. Uh, I, it seems to me that it just would be impossible uh, entirely to... Uh, Wipe out experience. To... to discount or escape from experience, but I'd like just to stick to the, to the term experience because it's such a very, um, perhaps there's a, very, a particular sense you want to attach to, it's such a very general word. It seems to describe the continuity of consciousness, which yes. is simply characteristic of being human. But perhaps you could say something about that. I don't know quite what you mean by experience. One can experience what one desires. You mean imagining it? Yes. Mm. And also one can experience uh, according to your conditioning. If I'm a Buddhist Mm. and a devout Buddhist, Mm. I can experience the the state of that consciousness which was supposed to be Buddha's. Well, this is a rather special sort of experience, isn't it? Yes. yes. So I'm just uh, I'm yes. questioning what we mean by I can experience uh, anger. Mm. I wonder, is there a difference between the experience and the experiencer? 
Well, this is a, 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 a difficult question about how one is going to use the concept, because the word experience in English is, describes something fairly vague. It, it could mean, yes. uh, it could mean either, um, you say, I had a strange experience yesterday, or it can mean the continuity of your conscious life and your relationship to your past, or it can mean something momentary. But I, I think what you are wanting to mean by it is um, something which collects your past, yes, as yes, it were. Yes. Uh, and I, I, at one point, I think you, you describe desire as experience, whereas love is not experience. Love cannot be no, well, can, Could you just explain what the distinction is? Could we go into the question of who experiences the whole thing, anything? whether it is the experience of something imagined or <clears throat> experience your past tradition and images, past uh, figures, and so on. You, who, you say, who is, who is the who experiencer? Who is experiencing? Well, th this is a difficult question too, isn't it? I mean, if one were to ask a passerby in the street, I mean, he would yes, say, yes. the individual. Yes, yes. The individual yes. does. Or the I'm experiencing. Yes, it, the, these experiences belong yeah. to me. Yeah. Say they are I experience, I had an experience of an accident this morning in a car. Yes. I experience uh, so many things. But, the, the, but then, I mean, if one were to pursue the matter beyond that kind of answer, yes. one might say, well, of course, one must distinguish between different kinds of experience. Yes, that's what I would um, And one would then uh, think, I mean, let's say I could think of, say, three kinds immediately. I mean, that there's the experience of my past life. You say of somebody, he's an experienced man, meaning he's had a lot of, lot of, a lot okay. of experiences yeah. <laughs> of a certain kind, perhaps. Uh, and then you'd say um, that experience is the, just the continuity of my consciousness, uh, going away into the past. Yes. Uh, now, continuity of your past, of your co of one's consciousness, mm. right? Yes. What do you mean by the word consciousness? Well, then this is to let's pursue the matter. Then in this way, that one would say, well, my consciousness differs at different times. I mean, it would be, and the word experience, I would think, would differ whether you were talking about uh, just ordinary um, life when, say, you're as a way imposing, let's put it this way, that partly you are sort of imposing yourself on the world, and you'll say, I'm doing this, I'm yeah, doing that. Yeah, yeah. And this would be perhaps experience. But yeah. also there might be an experience where you aren't really present. Now, now, now just that's it. Hmm. Where the experiencer is not, yes. is there an experience which you can then remember and say, this is it? Well, I would think that people have what I'd call selfless experience. Eh? Uh, um, when they're, well, for instance, when they're um, looking at a great work of art. Yes, yes. Uh, or um, I'm not I'm sure about whether if they're with somebody they love very much, one could say this, perhaps. I think these two cases are very different then. Eh? Yes. But what, what do you, how, why would you... I would like to go into this question, if I may. Who is experiencing all this? Whether it's the ordinary things or the most complicated forms of experiences or so-called spiritual experiences, mm -hmm. right? Who is it that's always experiencing is the, is the experiencer different from the experience? Well, we would normally say so, wouldn't we? Because um, yes, we would one, say we so. believe in the continuity of an individual person. Yeah. Yes, which of that course would is a, commonly held. Yes. Now, I, I, we are going to question that. Yes. That is, is the experiencer or the thinker different from his thoughts? 
Um, well, again, we would usually say so because um, that one uh, you could say I order my thoughts. I mean, I yes, uh, I order. This assumes that I yes. am deciding to. Col I collect my thoughts. Yes, you have yes. such a phrase. Yes, don't you? but is that I who orders his thoughts different from his thoughts? Who, he may order them, he may discipline them, he may control them. He might say, this is right, this is wrong, this must be done, that must not be done. But is the controller, the person who disciplines, brings order, is it different from the things which he's ordering about? Well, let's make a distinction here between ordinary language, where one speaks about, I mean, in a law court or something, somebody's responsible for something they've done, even they, they can't say, well, I'm a different person now or something. I mean, yes, there's an ordinary yes. sense of the continuity of the individual and somebody being the subject. Uh, but leaving that aside, uh, I mean, one doesn't have to be a philosopher or hold a religious view to think that the... One is divided. One is a divided being. That's it. That's and, uh, and there's, uh, there are times when one part of you disapproves yes, of another yes. part. Yes, so that's this what is, I, yes. This dual, dualistic yes. process yes. Yes. is that. Is there difference between? We we'll come back to the old question: the good and the bad. Well, nothing could be more fundamental. Yes. Yes. It yes. comes to yes. that. Yes. I mean, the, 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 this seems to me. The nature of the real world. Real there world. is this difference. I know. Yes. The real world is we have divided the good and the bad. Mm. And the thinker, the experiencer from the experience. Yes, th this would follow in that if you, if you condemn yourself for doing something, yes. then you are divided. Yeah. Yes. 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 I should not, I must, yes. Yes. I will become, and all the rest of it. Mm. It means yes. division yes. in oneself. Yes. I, I would like to ask, if I may, is that the experiencer or the thinker different from the thing he's experiencing or the thinker different from his thoughts? Well, if, you, if this is a, an appeal to... Um, the word experience comes up to it, my mind. If this is an appeal to how I think about myself, uh, I would say, um, leaving aside the, the common sense or ordinary language view, of course. Uh, uh, sometimes yes and sometimes no. I mean, that sometimes one is consciously uh, judging oneself, dividing oneself. Yes, yes. Sometimes there's nothing except uh, a single Move. something or other. Single moon. Single being or yes, something. Yes, yes. 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 So, mm. I, I'd like to see, is the experiencer, is not the experience the same as the experience? Well, it sometimes seems so. Yes. So, when we say I am envious, yes. a, they, and then there is a division. Yes. Then I try to control my envy, or rationalize my envy, or justify, or suppress, and so on. Yes. But the eyes is is envy, not separate from. Well, I would have thought it, it is and it isn't. Uh, there's something. Uh, there's two two things that you say uh, in what I have have read, uh, and what I understood from our last conversation. Uh, Two, perhaps I can put it this way, the two things which uh, you seem to me to say, which I don't understand how they connect or, um, are, or harmonize. I mean, one of the things is, I think, that you, uh, which I liked very much, you said that if I think that I am, if I condemn myself, if I think, if I think well, put it this way, uh, if I think that I am envious, say, well, now, the word envy suggests something which is bad. So when... <laughs> wants not to be envious, perhaps. Uh, if I say this, I must start, 
uh, not in a kind of ideal self, which no, doesn't no, exist, no, no. but in my real yeah. being, which is the envious person. Uh, I, I feel great sympathy with this. But then you also say that um, uh, there's no process. I mean, that I must be good, not become good. That yeah. the idea of becoming good <laughs> is in some way an, an illusion. Yes, that's now, perhaps right. you could explain... I mean, it seems to me that in the one case you're suggesting that I must start from a goal, which is a long way from my conclusion. My conclusion would be to become unenvious. And the other way you're saying uh, that uh, uh, there is no process of becoming. So there is no, for me, there is no psychological becoming at all. Yes, well, this is what I don't understand, because... No, go we'll go have on, to go, go into on. it. Yes. It's rather, yes, yes. Mm. First of all, let's come to this point. We have divided the world and in myself the good and the bad, mm. right? But you, you don't, uh, you just don't dispute this. I mean, no, you don't reject this. I don't refute. I'm yeah. just looking yeah. at it. Yeah. Is the bad related to the good? Or is the good totally divorced from the bad? They are not related at all. If they are related, the good is still part of the bad. Well, I, I find, uh, if, you're, if you're asking me, would I agree with that? I, I, I'm not sure. I mean, I, I think that, uh, I think we think about good and bad in, in several different ways, don't we? We think of bad grading into good, as if it were a spectrum, where the good is, is here, say, and yes, bad is a here. Yes, continue to the bad. A continuum. continuum. We also think, I think, of good as being, if we think of it as perfection, being really outside the world no, altogether. I don't, I don't know perfection, I mean the good, being good, whole, good health, good, uh, good man, good, you know, the word good. Yes, well, let's say good man then, mm. yes. Uh, is, is that good part of the bad? Does the good know the bad? Or the bad, or the good is the outcome of the bad. Then, if it is outcome, it is still part of the bad. Um, it's like a child being born; it is still part of the mother. Well, uh, yes. Uh, some people would say that they are opposites, which exist in relation to each other. Yes. Yes. Now, I say, are they opposite? Are they totally? They have no relation. Well, there's a very clear difference between a bad man and a good man. Yes. So yes. in that sense, yes. they are very different. Yes. On the other hand, in a human being, good and bad grade into each other. And sometimes you don't know which is which. No, that's what I'm questioning. That's what I'd yes. like to discuss with yes. you. I feel, I mean, to me, the good is totally divorced from the bad. Like love okay. is not related to hate. Yes, I mean, in ordinary fallen human conditions, of course, love often occasions hate. Of course, it? of course. <laughs> yes. But uh, you say love is not related to hate. Uh, you mean that it's an entirely different kind of concept? Yeah, totally. Love has no um, feeling about hate. It has no relation to hate. Which is yes, go on. Yes, it is not encompassing or embracing. Hate. Wait a minute. Let me ask a, a, a supplementary question. Would you say the same about love and desire? If we took yes. the two, yes. those two words, yes, I yes. Would. you would say yes. That, that love you, is you, you regard desire as something uh, connected with psychological becoming. Yes. Yes, and love is entirely something different. Well, now, how does this different thing? Uh, come to one. I mean, I might say, well, wh why should it concern me? What am I to do about it? Because, or simple enough, there's conflict. If yes. there is conflict, yes. desire always brings conflict. Yes. But love can never bring conflict. Love has no conflict. It has no sense of conflict. Yes, you're using the word love in, in a, a, an ideal sense, which no, is unusual. No, I'm using it say, for instance. Uh, this is rather, I don't know if you want to go into it. Oh, please, please. The brain, the brain is the 
entire sense of centre of desire, feeling, anxiety, pain, loneliness. Yes. You follow? Yes. It ha- it's co- the consciousness is all that. Yes. The belief, the f- mm. fears, the sorrow, the loneliness, the anxiety, you know, the whole... The, the sort of the psychological yeah. being. Yes. psychological mm. stra- mm. Yes. confusion. Yeah. <coughs> that, mm. That's the brain. Mm. Yes. And therefore, it, love is not part of the brain, it must be something outside. I don't know if so, I uh, yes, but this comes back to your saying that you don't experience love oh, in the way in which you experience desire. It is, I can't experience something which is so. But if I just, I mean, if I'm loving, I mean, uh, better to, again, let's put this aside, that in ordinary parlance, um, you speak of jealous love or yeah, something. I well, that's not uh, what we're talking about. One's well, talking about some sort of absolute, or I can't think of the right word here. But then, I mean, if I say, well, I, I dearly love somebody in some, as my, one might say, uh, not a, a bad way, but a good way, as it yes. were, uh, but if would, I, would you want to say this is not part of a, any psychological process in, in no, my mind? No, I would say, I say I love you, hmm? mm. if I love somebody mm. that way. If there is any tinge of attachment, mm. any tinge of jealousy, yes. Any shadow of conflict, mm. then it's not the real thing. Yes, yes. Right, yes. I mean, this. I mean, I'm. I was brought up as a Christian, so there's a lot of, of uh, a Christian way of looking in me. Although I don't believe in God or the divinity of Christ, uh, but I can see. I mean, in Christianity, uh, there would be an idea of divine love or perfect love, yes. which is something which. We don't normally achieve at all, perhaps, but which... I, I, I don't see why not. Because if, I, if I'm not jealous, I won't be jealous. Uh, there is no sense of attachment to another person, which well, doesn't mean lack of love. Attachment is, is a, a, attachment and desire. I mean, I think I mean, what one would, in ordinary parlance, call a virtuous love, I mean, where you're not hurting anybody else by loving this person, and you're not possessive and unreasonable and so on. Uh, there is attachment. I mean, there's, uh, inevitably, that, if the no. person dies... Wait, wait, wait. Uh, now, that's a different question. I mean, mm. why are we attached to anything? Attached. If I'm attached to this house... Yes, I, I would... Uh, I think I would take a different view, I think, of the notion of desire. I mean, that is, I, it seems to be, I, I would think, that becoming good, to use this phrase, which <coughs> perhaps you would want to exclude, is a matter of purifying one's desires, having uh-huh. good desires, that is, desiring something which is good. E- now, in loving somebody, uh, I would have felt that the element of desire uh, was, was present. Let's look at desire. What is desire? Well, there are, uh, again, one would say, well, there are low desires and there are high desires. No, no, I'm saying, no, I'm mm. asking, what is the origin, the beginning of desire? Why why has desire become such an extraordinarily important part of our life? Well, desire is certainly connected with with the future. With the future? It's connected with time. Of course, with time. Because I, I desire something which is absent. Uh, and I, um, but I mean, let's take examples. I mean, I might desire to be frightfully rich, or I might desire to study a subject and become good at it. I mean, in yes, a situation yes. where there's Good no at reason, piano. Good at, well, well, let's say, or good at mathematics. Math- or, yes, uh, yes, to yes. Acquire, acquire knowledge. Yes, of course. This or, well, wouldn't this, and I might say, I love, I love my subject. Yes, uh, uh, I yeah, love what I'm yeah. studying. Uh, no, but I'm asking, not I'm asking, what is desire? How does it come? What is the? Why does it control us so strongly? I mean, after all, a monk or one of the Indian sannyasis, their whole idea is suppressed desire. 
or transmute desire. Well, transmute, yes. I'd, I'd rather use the word transmute. Yes. No. That is transmute. There is an entity who transmutes it. Yes, and there's a process of transmuting and, yeah, and, and discipline or, or training yeah, or training, something yeah, like that. Which yes. is Education. a form of not only subtle form of suppression, subtle mm. form of organizing desire. Yes. Or saying desire for God is good. Yes. Desire for riches is bad. And desire yes. for um, possessions yes. is bad. Yes. So we're not discussing only the the objects of desire, whether it is God, whether it is power, whether it is to become a rich man or a prime minister. But what is desire? How does it take shape in us? Well, uh, whether there can be love without desire, uh, I'm not... I'm not sure. I, I, if one thinks perhaps of some kind of perfect love, the notion of desire would have changed so much that perhaps you would have to exclude it. But would, at an ordinary, at a more ordinary but good level, I mean, of course, I, I, of course, uh, I mean, if if I desire to become well educated or something, yes, or, that's a different. Uh, then this is a it's a tension it's a kind of tension yeah, between a, a condition which exists and a condition which does not exist but i'm asking not desire to become a good human being or desire <coughs> to be a good scholar and yeah. so on but desire itself well i i would i think i would evade or reject this question because i don't i don't see how one could explain what desire was without thinking of different kinds of desire. No, or, or do you think I say I desire for a house, I desire for this and this, too many desires. Yes. But the, the movement of desire, the origin of it, because <coughs> we have either suppressed it, transmuted it, or escaped from it. Yes. Or uh, Totally control it, mm. but again, who is the controller? Who says this is good desire, this is bad desire? This is this must be pursued because it's helpful. The other is no one. So on. it's still desire. Desire for God. Or desire for money is still desire. And uh, if someone says one is good and the other is bad, you would come back to saying all the same it's desire. Yes, desire is important to understand, not good desire and bad desire. Yes, I, I'm not sure that I would be able to understand it without without using that distinction. But, but perhaps I can. I mean, let's shift our ground slightly. Um, there's something behind what you're saying. Now, no, you just now said desire involves time. Yes. Yes. Um, well, all right. Desire I, for. Well, I'm going, to, I, I'm going to withdraw that now and modify it by saying that I think that there, should, there might be some kind of desire which does not uh, involve time, but where you are completely united with the object of your desire. I mean, I think this again would, I mean, something in Christian mysticism might say that that desire, if you desire God, and if you're united with God, I mean, I don't know what this would be, uh, then uh, your desire is fulfilled and becomes perfect love or something yes, like that. Yes, yes, yes. But mm. is the, the man who says, I must become a very rich man, mm. Mm, powerful man, mm. is still desire. Yes, but... Uh, uh, One is for God. Yes. And the, and the unification with God, still desire. Yes, but you speak of desire as if it's something which you want to overcome I or do, set aside. No, I, I want to understand the movement of it, the process of it, the, uh, the intolerable burden of it, or the pleasure of it. Yes, it's not always a burden, is it? I mean, if, oh, yes, if, you, de if you desire something 
For instance, if you're hungry I uh, see. and you know that you're going to Course, have a, a, a good meal shortly, then the tension of desire is pleasurable. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but there's something behind what you say which I, I can't I'm, get. I'm going to go on, go on, go on. Into it. Yes. Desire exists only when there, is, when there is identification with sensation. By sensation, you don't mean bodily sensation. sensation but, uh, uh, I see the lovely house, mm. and I want it. I, there is desire for it. You don't mean that there's an actual physical concomitant, but that there's a kind of um, both, this imagery. Both, I mean, both, you, both. You imagine yourself in the house. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That Things is like that. sensation. Yes. Then thought. Creating the image of my own in the house. Yes, yes. Then desire begins. Yes, well, yes, right, yes, yes, yes. Right? So, the, yes, there is a kind of sensory aspect. Sensory uh, aspect? Desire, with um, which is. Yes. A right. thought then gives that sensory aspect of an image. Mm. Yes, this doesn't mean, of course, that, I mean, one says one desires. Um, one desires to be educated. This doesn't mean you're thinking about it all the time or having sensations. Of course, of course. It just means you're carrying on your ordinary of life. Course, but there course. would be moments when you, you I'm, have. That's why I'm questioning. You, you have a sensory experience of desire, perhaps. Yes. You imagine what it'll be like when you, your education is better or something like that. Yes. So I'm. I'll, um, the more when sensation is has given shape by thought, then it becomes desire. That's all I'm saying. Yes, but then... Uh, I'm not saying good, bad, and no. all the rest of it. But desire, then, Yes, but then you... Per you, se. You, just, you say that love is, is different from desire. Oh, that. And love is desire from pleasure. Sorry, say, say it again. Love is different. Love is not pleasure. Love is not desire. Um... Uh, yes, all right. Uh, uh, I, I would want to think that pur purified desire. Uh, this, the, sorry, this, the, this introduces another topic at this moment, which I let's just put, I just mentioned, put it aside. I, I am also concerned with what you feel about motivation and energy. Yes. I mean, I think des desire is a source of energy, it is. and good desire is a source of good energy. Yes. But but let's t take this idea of love being different. I mean, there's something. This is, it seems to me a contrast between a process and something which is not a process. Which is not a process, no. Yes. It's, and you distinguish, you say that there's something like, so use some word like creative being, which is to do with the present. Yes. And you would connect this with the possibility of love and truth. Yes. Whereas desire is, is something restless, which is... Is restless, Is quite outside. Right. It, this, but love is, doesn't mean it is static. No, uh, static is probably the wrong word here. What, what would you say? It is alive. It isn't just it's, a... It's creative uh, and it's... Yeah, it's not and exclusive. It's, and it's... I may love you, mm. but I also have this feeling of love. <coughs> it's well, not just identified with one person. But the feeling of love is, is a quite different feeling from the feeling of desire. Oh, naturally. So uh, you're not excluding the sensory aspect of thought. No, wait a minute, let's go into it slowly. Yes. As we said just now, the brain is part of the senses, part of reactions, action, re um, responses, beliefs, faith, fear, all that is the centre here, which is my consciousness. The content of my consciousness is all that. God, no, God, uh, my knowledge, my failure, my depression, my anxiety, all that is that. Yes. Now, if in that there's a great deal of confusion, contradiction, fears, and all the rest of it, is love part of that? I don't know. You, you tell me. I you? say, I personally, to me, it's not. But then, if if, if uh, love is uh, a condition, is, oh, is is a human condition. I mean, it is. Uh, uh, there is a state of being. 
creator, which is love, or creative being, which is love. And so a person uh, is sometimes in this condition. Uh, are you suggesting that at that moment, uh, all the psychological stuff which that person consists of and has collected is uh, Absent. somehow absent? Yes. Um, but still, he must know what the object of his love is. No, just a minute. I might love you. Hmm? And it is not exclusive. Yes. Yes. It's not universal or any of that. It's yes. not exclusive. Mm. It's not limited. Yes. Though, I mean, in a sense, it is and it isn't, isn't it? Because one, I mean, if one loves, a, if one loves a person, you love that person. And not another one. But, um, but it doesn't mean that you exclude anybody. Anybody, no. 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 But still. It is, it's, love is not exclusive. No, but it, it is selective. Yeah. If one could make I, the distinction. No, 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 that word selective, who then becomes... Who After all, uh, well, doesn't love everybody. I mean, no, uh, wait a minute. Uh, uh, perhaps God does, and perhaps we should. Uh, that's to, what I'm. To no, be I God. don't want to attribute love to God or to some. Well, well, I mean, ideology. I'm just using God as a figure of speech. No. I mean that an ideal love, perhaps. Would no, embrace I wouldn't even everything. use the word ideal. No. I don't know. No. No. I am no. object. I strongly object to ideas, yes. ideals, yes. and all that yes. kind of thing. I I see definitely love has no relationship to hate. Love has no relationship to jealousy. Mm. It is not attached. Yes. It's not desire. It's not pleasure. But, uh, I mean, to ask very, very simple-minded questions, I mean, in the life, uh, let's say that you're interested in another person. I mean, after all, people come to you. I mean, I, I care. I, I, I am care. Coming to you. I care. Yes, uh, but I, I ask. Um, well, do you think there are certain times in one's life when one is uh, one's uh, difficult to find the word here? When, well, when one, one is uh, expressing or being love. Yes, that's. Uh, but should, one... should, should this be every moment of one's life? I am not sure, life. madam. I'm not at all mm -hmm. sure it mm -hmm. cannot be all the time there. Yes, 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 good, yes. Yes. Um, and you think... You see, you see that, can, uh, love, on, yes. can love exist when there is self-centered interest? Um, That's the real question. Uh, no, it would be Im imperfect love. But no, let's, not let's, perfect. Let's leave out uh, imperfect love is, is not love. Then. <laughs> oh, right. I mean, when, I, when there's self-interest, can the other exist? Can, obviously cannot. Because no, self, or, the self-interest is very, very right. small. Uh, well, uh, you won't let me use the word perfect or ideal, but I'll use love in your sense then. All right. Uh, love uh, then uh, does excludes self-interest. The, where there's self, self interest, yes. the other is not. Yes, but look, then, you see, something that I very much want to find out, uh, and everybody wants to find out, is um, how to change. How to? How to change. Ah, well, that's enough. How to become. Well, it's connected with this. No, because, no wait a minute. Because no, wait a minute. Uh, this is a really how interesting move, question. How no? to move out of the out situation of, yes. of being no, envious? Say with me. Uh, I am I am envious. Yes. There is no difference between I and envy. I am envious. Envy yes. is me. Yes, as we were saying earlier, that the person is the envious I mean, person. Envy is me. Mm. Mm. I cannot act on envy. Mm. Because well, it's me. Yes, but you can become less envious. I know, that's not, but it's still me. Go on, yes. Mm. Go on. Right? Mm. So there is no question of suppression, transmutation, or escaping from it. It's me. Mm. What do I do next? Now, wait a minute, I'm going to. <laughs> if it is me, no. I watch it. Mm. Yes. I watch it very, very carefully. Watch it. Not try to act upon it. So there, there's a you who's watching the envy. No, watching is not, there is no you. Mm. When you are watching a bird, 
There's no you, you're just watching the bird. Well, watching a bird is quite different from... Uh, That's just it. So can the I other wa- kinds of watching. Of course. That's can I watch? Can, is there a watching without the word? Watching without a condemnation? Just watching or agreeing or rejecting or resisting? Well, there, there can be such watching, yes. It's difficult. But, I mean... Well, wait a minute. We've got this envious person, uh, or oneself, one is envious. Then uh, one uh, is aware of, of, the, of the envy. One watches it, but just watching. Watching? Or, or being it, if you like. Put it another... Uh, consciously being your envy. Would, would you accept Not that consciously, you are, you are envy. Yes, yeah, so, but you're consciously, I mean, well, when you m- enviously do something, know, no, that, thoughtlessly, you're no, not watching it, no, you're expressing that's it. All, that, but then be, there are moments, perhaps, when be, you're Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yes. Like, you're attending watch, to it. Look, you're watching a precious, intricate jewel. Yes. yes. Then you're, you're looking at the extraordinary delicacy, the bright light and the... Yes. the the beauty of the jewel. Yes, yes. yes. In this case, you're looking at envy. Then. Envy. I'm doing yes. exactly the same thing. Then I see the whole movement of envy, which yes. is co- comparison and so on, so yes. on, so on. Yes, yes. So I, I watch it without any thought interfering with my watching. Yes. Without there, that requires a great deal of attention. Yes. Not concentration, real... Mm. Attention in which the self is not. But are you not making a judgment? No, no. No. You're, you're watching without judgment. Oh, no, I have no value. I don't say you must or must not have envy. It's immoral or anything of that kind. It, this, human beings have lived with envy for thousands of years. But then, is not the result of this attention that your envy disappears? Watching with attention. Watching is attention. Yes. Yes, I, I like the word attention. Then you pay, you attend uh, in, you would say, some non-evaluating way. You're not making a moral oh, judgment. Oh, no. I'm and not you're not saying, I ought not to be envious. Oh, no. <laughs> that no. would be no. true. Like, but, but it is not, um, I wouldn't say the purpose, but certainly the result of this attention, that the envy dissolves. Yes, attention, because in the inattention there is no self at all. Yes, good, good, o- okay. I mean, I, I understand this uh, state of being. Which you, see, you can watch it, you know. Yes, but then... Uh, it's great fun. Uh, if I can use is, it. Uh, <laughs> uh, is not this then... Uh, I mean, this connects with my question about how do I change. Uh, yes, not that's, this, this is what we're saying. Yes. Well, is, is not that then this is, if you like, to use old-fashioned language, a spiritual discipline? No. I well, know you I, don't like the I word don't discipline I don't like the word no. discipline. No. Right. Because discipline means really to learn, not to compartmentalize, pursue. To learn watching. Not memorize watching, mm-hmm. but to see the whole implication of implications of envy, comparison, all the rest of it. And see? this, uh, this um, state of attention uh, would be something which, um, supposing somebody says, or I say, why not me, um, but does this happen only when you're meditating first, no. to use a word which you yourself know, use, no. or does it, should it happen all the time? All the time. All the if time. you're watching, yes. that is, you yes. don't allow, don't let a single thought slip by without knowing what it is. Yes, and this would coexist uh, with uh, one being a ticket collector or whatever one's uh, job in life is, that you could, in fact, the, one, the idea of living at different levels or I different... Know. Yes, yes, states yes. Uh, must come in, I think, that uh, there would be a state of your being yes. which was this constant attention. But you see, I'd also you introduced the word meditation. Yes, well, it, it is a word that you use yourself. I know, yes. I use that word, yes. but mm-hmm. you see, meditation is a very complex business. Yes. But it's not... Mm. 
how shall we put it? In meditation, there is no meditator at all. Yes, yes, okay. Mm. Mm. Yes. But now, what we do? I must yeah. meditate. Mm. I must follow a system to meditate. Yes, I. I, I must. There yes. must be practice, which is all exactly desire, which want to achieve a certain state. Yes, well, I, this, this seems to me, in a sense, unavoidable. I don't know. I mean, I, I mean, I have been taught a system of meditation uh, a long time ago, and I have practiced, and to some extent, do practice something yeah, like this, meditation, only in a very yes. feeble, yeah, feeble way. But it, it does seem to me that uh, um, <laughs> there's something which is trying to do it better. Uh, uh, that, um, now, when you use the word better, that means more. Huh? Therefore, measurable. More, well, no, more, more, more like you see, you say uh, when uh, in meditation there, there is no, there's no duality. I mean, there's no subject. Absolutely uh, not. Uh, and I would say that something like this happens when in, in experience of art. Uh, 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 moment, I, moment you say experience, yes, you're already all right. Okay. Well, uh, in, I mean, if I'm if I'm looking at a great picture. Uh, if I'm really looking, I'm not there. Yeah, that's all. Picture is there. That's all. Yes, yes. If when you are really looking at something, there is the absence of the self. And this would be an image of love too, wouldn't it? That, yeah. that you would there, be there. there. There is no image in it. Yes. There is no image in love. Um, of course, not. image is put together by thought. Yes, I, I think that, that uh, in certain in a certain way of loving, I mean, do you, I mean, unselfish love, I mean, this is difficult to talk about because yeah. love happens in time and you have to struggle and think and plan and do things for somebody you love, but uh, you would be uh, rarely selfless in all that you're doing. I mean, you'd, there'd be somebody of there course, doing of course. things, Otherwise, but the self uh, would, would not be present. The yeah. object of attention would be yeah. present. The, that's why. I, but I, it seems to me you have to, to try. I mean, you seem you give me the end, but not the means. No, no, wait, wait, wait. wait. Let's look yes, at it. Go on. Yes. Let's look at it. The means is the end. There are no, not the two are diff, not different. But, but, sorry, may I just quote a, a remark of, made by Kafka to the effect that there is there is no way. There is only the end. What we call the way is just messing about. Yes, you yes, would agree with this. Right? Yes. <laughs> yes, I think. I mean, I, I see and I don't see, as it were. Uh, no, but let's begin. Go, go on, Look, go on. Yes. Let's try something else. Yes. Mm. You see, change implies future, as you pointed out. Right. Mm. From this to that. Yes, and imagining a future. Yes, perhaps. yes, yes. the future. Yes. yes. What is the future? Please the I future is. Go on. Yes. The future is a continuity of the past, mm. modified through the present. Yes. It's a movement. Yes, all right. Yes. Right. Yes. So, the, the future is in the present. Mm. Well, um, um, no, no. I'm going to the future in the sense. Yes. I mean, uh, if I'm learning a language. Mm. Yes, that's a good example. I think. If I'm learning a language, yes. I need future. I need time. Yes. Yes. I need, need training, discipline. Uh, discipline. I have Becoming. to, etc., etc. Yes, et yes, I, yes. I have to learn a language. Yes. Now, there is all right, but psychologically, inwardly, mm. sub- subjectively, the past. Which is me, my memories, my experiences, all the past, is being modified in the present and proceeds to the future. Right? This is this is the whole movement of our evolution, of our psychological well being or not well being and so on. So the present is in the future because what I am now will be what tomorrow, mm-hmm. unless I change now, right? Yes. 
So the present is contains the past, the future is now. Right? Yeah. The present. Yes. Now, the present is what I am. In a sense, there isn't anything else. But go on, yes. yes. That's what In I am. Sense. Yes, go on. My memories, my... Mm -hmm. All that. Yes. And there is no future unless I continue. Mm -hmm. Is there an end to that? You mean, is there an alternative state of being? Yes. Mm. Ending this whole movement of becoming, struggling, achieving. Yes, of course, philosophers have always been worrying about the difference in being and becoming. And in Platonism and in Christian theology, being is real and becoming is unreal. And I feel something of this in in what you say, but I don't want to mislead myself by thinking about anything else. Um, I mean, what, I'm trying to picture what, uh, what, what you uh, are speaking of would be like. I mean, that one would, uh, let's say you're, you're spending your time learning a language and you, you don't know the irregular verbs today. Next so, week you will know the irregular verbs. I learned. And this is, a, this is human life and, and yes. unavoidable and, and proper and quite right that quite you should right, learn the proper. irregular verbs. However, uh, during this time, there's also, you're also, as we're tending to everything that you do. Of course. In a, I'm paying attention to everything I do. Yes. Now. Uh, uh, now. Uh, in, so the in now way, contains in, in a particular manner. Yeah, the now contains all time. Yes, I mean you are picturing um, a possible human state. No, I'm not picturing. I'm just saying. See what uh, what has happened to human psyche. It has moved in this direction always: past, mm. modifying the present and the future. Mm. This is the chain, mm. right? in which we are caught, which we are. I won't even use the word caught, which is what we are. Uh, yes, the word caught, though, suggests that, that uh, there's, some, there's freedom. That's another word that you use. Uh, there's course, freedom, 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 which is connected with truth yes. and with love. Yes. Uh, and so uh, somebody comes to you saying, well, I'm in a trap. How do I get out of the trap? Yeah, uh, the, if you're in a trap, let's look. What's in the trap first, before we want to get out of it? Well, I mean, I, I don't want to... Uh, well, this is perhaps this is just a relevant remark, but I mean, I yeah. don't want to get out of the trap in the sense that I, I don't want to stop wanting next week to know the irregular verbs. I, that, of course. Yes. I, next that, week... That goes on, yes. But what I, I also want, uh, say, to achieve uh, a state of being which is selfless, Yes, and which means this what? Is, this you be deserve for it. Thing of all. Be careful, you deserve for it. Uh, uh, well, because you have a concept of the future. Yes, I mean, I know that now I am not selfless. No, but you have I would like to become selfless. Therefore, l let's understand what the self is. You can't change, or rather, break down the self or whatever it is without understanding the movement of the self. Not invent... Um, Go. But in the situation where one's looking at one's envy, for instance, uh, we agreed that one result of this attention would be that the envy would disappear. So the self is changing. Which matters not ending of envy, but attention matters. Yeah. But supposing I just attended to my envy and went on behaving enviously, but with complete consciousness of what I was doing, would that be a good state? Then, then you see, good. you being conscious that there is still part of the self. Well, one's not postulating a kind of. Um, um, one's not, I think, postulating a condition which is totally unlike the human condition. I no, mean, no. One's, I say, one's imagining I, a way I'm, in which we human, are beings, human might, beings might be. Yes, we are human beings. Mm. We, are, we live in this constant conflict, pain, sorrow, and all that. Right? Yes. This is our life. We are, it's our condition. Mm. 
But somebody comes along, you come along and tell me, look, there's a different way of living. Yes. Not be everlastingly this business. Yes. Yes. And you see, and you listen to him, find out. Yes. You may say rubbish and drop it. Mm. But you must there must be a relationship to the speaker and yourself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, that it, like now, I am asking no, you. We are yes, talking, yes, I mean. Yes, go on. Mm. Which means that I must the speak you tell me envy is not love, envy cannot be put aside. Watch it, look at it, see it and let it unfold. Don't condemn it, transmute it, or renew it, and so on, escape. But just watch it, give, which means give your whole attention to it. Well, but would this not result, actually, in my inhibiting it? No. Well, why not? I mean, wouldn't it... All right, put it another I'm way. I'm bringing it out. Would, wouldn't it be uh, good for me? Uh, to, to inhibit simple, it? To, to inhibit my envy. No, I feel it'll envy, come up again some other it. time. If I inhibit yes, it. all right, but it, it, uh, it, it just meanwhile, it might be better if I inhibit <laughs> I it. I don't want to meanwhile. Uh, well, yes, but you seem to me to exclude the element of um, training oneself. Uh, I mean, you, you don't want, you don't like the word discipline. No, discipline, uh, Madame, as you know, comes from the word disciple who is learning. Learning, learning, not memorize, learning to see the beauty of that, of that jewel. I never looked at the jewel. I, I have always condemned it, rationalized, etc. But now uh, there is only watching that jewel. Yes, but what you're watching in this case is, is something precious. It's an Im- it uh, doesn't matter if it, it costs a million pounds. It's something which is pictured as, as absolutely precious. Uh, now, if I'm looking at my envy, it's the opposite of a jewel. It's something bad. No, I don't condemn it. I, there's no con- spirit of condemnation or judgment or evaluation. Just watch it. I watch my, my son. I don't mm. say, my Joe, you shouldn't be this, you shouldn't be that. Mm. I just watch him. But, may I, don't you watch? Say, for instance, when you look at a picture, I watch it. I see all the lights, the proportions, the, uh, the dark. Looking at a picture is, is a good example for, um, for me at any rate, in trying to under, understand what your, what your fundamental idea is here. But I, it still troubles me that you're suggesting what I, I would, uh, if I understand you, think was a kind of ideal mode of being, a real mode of being, in which you're connected with reality. Yes. But uh, there remains the fact that one is, not, one is not in this state. One is sunk in illusion. One is full of illusion. That's all. Yes. Now, well, now, go on. Yes. I'm in illusion. Mm. I am illusion. Mm. I live in illusion. Yes. My thinking, my, I, this is my belief, faith, or illusion. Now, why does the word illusion come, you know, is to play, mm. ludere. Mm. To play, I'm playing with illusions. Mm. But why, why should I bother? I mean, put it oh, in yes. another way. Why, why sh- shouldn't I just watch my... Uh, if, I, if I'm a clever person, I can watch my envy and uh, be amused by it and continue to behave enviously. All right, carry on. There's um, conflict in it. There's con- there is a certain sense of agony in it. There's but pain. Don't, don't you think that would, wouldn't you wish if you saw somebody that you loved uh, in a state of illusion? Wouldn't you wish for that person? I go and that talk to him. They should change. I will go and talk to him. Yes. Well, then you are suggesting that he should change. I'm not, I You're suggesting what? moral values. No, no. I would say to him, look, why do you have these illusions? Well, to call them illusions is already to make oh, a moral right. judgment. I, I, now, let, you don't even call it illusion. Yes. You believe in God. Hmm? Somebody believes. Well, or yes. some other thing. Yes. Well, let, let, let's stick to the case of envy, because that's fairly straightforward. Right. That, that somebody is consumed with envy. Where some people perhaps oh, I know them. I know. absolutely, oh, he's got that, <laughs> he's better than me, and so on. And 
consumed. And by you will watch somebody like you say, look, why waste your energy and your anxiety on something which is not deeply really important and you shouldn't but be doing it? That is if they are willing to it's, listen to It's you. unreal, yes, all right, yes. The well, moment they are willing to listen to you, yes. you have already had them. Yes, but then you've, you've taught them something. I yes. don't. I said, no, I have no pressure. I don't want him to change. Well, I know I, all good teachers refuse to call them conflict teachers. Is the, but, conflict is yes. the real root of all this. Mm -hmm. But supposing somebody was in a completely harmonious state um, with lots and lots of vices, what we call vices, supposing they're envious, jealous, violent, oh, no, that's angry, not... c couldn't they be uh, such a... Um, uh, uh, harmoniously c connected person, supposing they're very successful in everything that they do. <laughs> That's, I mean, would I'm, you say that this was impossible? No, this is, it, you can't be harmonious when what, with your right hand you're kicking violent, mm. and the other hand you're being harmonious. It is just... Well, yes, I mean, I agree with you. Uh, I mean, and I think people assume rightly uh, that. Um, that a, an evil man is in a state of conflict, that uh, a good man is harmonious. Good evil, man has no conflict. Yes, and an evil man has conflict. Um, well, this then uh, suggests that there's something, that the evil man has made a kind of mistake, there's something unreal about what he believes yes. about the world. So then, in making the distinction between good and bad, one is making a distinction between... No, we could see, for instance, a man who terrorists, a man who kills for the fun of killing. Mm. I mean, oh, is something wrong with the man? Uh, yes, this... Uh, I, don't, I don't call him evil or good. There's some kind of aberration going on in the poor chap. Well, so what you want to produce is a harmonious personality. Yeah, I want... No, I want to produce as well... Is it possible to end all conflict within oneself? That's the real root of the question. All conflict. And you'd be prepared to drop the words good and bad, then? And yes, use, use the words in that sense. harmony and disharmony? In that sense. Yes. I wouldn't use harmony or disharmony because the moment when there is no conflict, you're whole. This holistic way of living. Yes, but still, you're, you're still talking about good and evil in the sense in which we normally understand them. You, you speak of the terrorist, say. I mean, let's uh, picture a very bad man, not just an envious man, but a very evil man, somebody who's cruel. Yes, somebody who kills. Um, then one would want uh, this person to... Um, if you will listen, if you will change, so much the better. But they generally don't listen. <laughs> well, I think we're reaching the end of our room. Yes, we've reached the end. Perhaps we've reached it. <laughs>